Hi, my name is Chris Elgie. I work for Counterhack Challenges and with the Sands Institute. I am the architect and one of the builders of Core NetWars Tournament 8. NetWars is a project that Counterhack has been working on for over 10 years now, really born out of our passion for educating folks in the cybersecurity space. This particular version of NetWars we've been working on for about a year. Uh, it took a, a decent team of people to put it together and it, in brief terms, it is a gamified learning platform. It is a way for uh, folks to come in and play around with different cybersecurity skills and techniques and learn and grow and, and hopefully enjoy themselves a bit. Uh, we do try to keep it fun. That tends to keep people playing longer. We also layer storyline in. That also tends to engage players and keep them moving through the platform and learning. So whether people are brand new to the industry or they are experts and have been doing this for a long time, there's definitely something for them here in Core Networks Tournament 8. And that includes uh, different disciplines. So penetration testing, defense, uh, digital forensics. In this incident response, we have a bit of all of that here. So uh, so here I am. Uh, let's, let's just jump right in and see what it looks like. I'm in the Rages.io platform. Uh, I can log in with my SANS credentials. Uh, I get the, the code of conduct and then click join event, and I'm in. So what's before me are a list of challenges. At first, I only have this one available to me. This is just a check to make sure people got in okay. They can click on the challenge, and then really this, the solution here is just to click the let's go button, and uh, forgive us for being a little excited. We're, we're proud of what the team was able to accomplish here. Let's go. Uh, now notice here that there's also the reveal a hint link here. With challenges, especially early on in the game, we put all the hints in that folks are gonna need to, to get through them. So if someone is brand new to the industry, if they've never used Linux before, never used Windows, uh, we try to give them everything they'll need to, to get moving through these first few challenges. Now this one obviously is super simple. They just need to click the button and that's in fact exactly what the hint tells them. Click the button, so let's do that and move on. So now that I've done that, I can go back to the challenges and see a lot more has opened up. And before I click into the Linux challenges here, I do wanna make note of the team function over here on the left. Players can play as individuals. They can also play in teams of up to five. So if I wanna work with some of my workmates and uh, either, to, either to get through more challenges or maybe as team building or maybe to share skills across uh, our small team, I can do that here within uh, NetWars and, and play together. And whenever any of us answers a challenge, we all get the credit for it. Whenever one of us takes a hint, we all get to see the hint. So that is the teamwork option. Getting back to the challenges, let's look at our first real technical challenge here. This is in the uh, Smells Like Linux group here. And what we provide the player is a, a, a Linux terminal within the browser. So you notice I haven't mentioned anything about downloading VMs or running VirtualBox VMware. Uh, everything the player needs to accomplish all the challenges is provided right within the web browser. So for this one specifically, I can click here and it'll create a uh, Linux command line right in the browser for me. So, so here bringing the storyline forward, I'm your targeted automated responsive digital instructional system or phone booth, uh, and it wants to know if I'm ready to go. I am, I'll type yes and hit enter. And my first challenge here is to discover my present working directory. And if I'm not sure what to do because I've never used Linux before, it says right up top there that I can get a hint at any time by typing hint. So let's type Hint. And sure enough, it tells me I can type PWD to get my present working directory. So I'll do that. And it moves on automatically. It detected that I that I gave it a valid command that got the response that I should have gotten. So even if I did it a different way, uh, I've done what I'm supposed to do and it moves on to the next challenge. So it says, great, find a listing of files in my current directory. Well, I know that's LS, so I'll just type that in and it moves on. What is in the document.txt file? Maybe I'm not sure how to look in documents. So again, I'll type hint. And it says cat document.txt to print the contents of the files of the system. So, so as I'm going through, it's, it's not just telling me what to type, but it's telling me why. So that if I cat document.txt, I'll see the contents of it right in my terminal. And there it is. Now it's asking if there are any hidden files in my home directory. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how to do that, so I'm gonna type hint again. 
and it says uh, use one of these two commands ls a or ls la without the quotes and I'll see what's in my directory like before but also with hidden items so I'll try ls a and I see now uh, I have more things that show up uh, including you know dot bad wolf interesting I wonder what that's about so now it says move into the subdirectory I don't know what that means I'll type hint and it says uh, well, hit ls again, and maybe you can see what the what there are for directories. Uh, I don't need to do that. That's still on the screen here. I see the stories directory, and then I can, as it says, cd folder name, and move into it. So I will cd stories, and here we go. I've completed this short set of challenges, so just a little bite-sized piece uh, to work on, and now I can take this flag, just these these characters here, copy them to my clipboard, Bring them back into ranges, paste, try it, and I got points. Great. That was 50 more points for being able to do Linux challenges. Let's leave Linux for just a minute here and move on to some Windows challenges. Another thing that I, I think really differentiates this product from others, both at SANS and, and with other uh, cyber range uh, providers, is uh, just that, that everything that's needed is, is right here in the browser. So even a Windows system where normally we would have to download it or be running our own and, and import some assets, it's all provided right within the browser. So uh, this next challenge asks me to, to use the system provided to me and to look for something strange in HKLM software. Well, maybe I have no idea what that means. I, I can look at a hint and it'll tell me, well, this is a registry thing. I can use regedit.exe or I can use PowerShell uh, to, to run these commands to, to find what it is I'm looking for here. It even gives links to some Microsoft assets, some documentation from Microsoft about the registry and how to work with it. Uh, let me go over here uh, here I am, still in the browser, and this is a regular Windows machine. We've, we've added a bunch of tools to it, things like Wireshark, uh, even Linux. If you want to use Linux in Windows, you can do that. Uh, different tools from SysInternals that a lot of defenders use to analyze systems and grab forensic images and, and do different things like that. Uh, but key this time, of course, is I want regedit. So I start typing it, registry editor pops up, I can click it. And here I am in the registry editor. Uh, and this isn't a simulation. This is an actual Windows 2019 server system. This works just like Windows does on your desktop and has uh, all the same components. So uh, I needed to go into HKEY local machine and then look in software for something that sticks out. And as I go down through, I see Time Lords. That looks pretty odd to me. I click and then I know I'm in the right place because I see another flag right here. So I can click in here and again grab a piece, copy to my clipboard, bring it back to ranges with me, paste and try it. And great, I got another one correct. So you can see how these, these build to As I move on from this challenge to the next Windows challenge, it needs me to look a little deeper. It says, hey, that last thing you found, there was a hint about services. So at this point, the player is guided toward looking into Windows services for something that is strange, a bit of malware on that system, uh, guiding them along through. Let's leave Windows and move on to the, uh, the hackers only website. So I'm gonna skip some here. And Hackers Only is a website that, uh, that Evan, one of our creators, uh, built that is a fictional dating site for cybersecurity professionals, because why not? So uh, here we can click around and we can see the images, some computer generated images of, of people who are not real, uh, who exist on this fictional dating website. Now, this is bringing the players along in the story. Our, our story here is that our, our, we have a protagonist named Trace and Trace is being uh, chased down by some bad actors. They're, they're, they're messing with him across time. And one of the things those bad actors have done is just try to go to this website, Hackers Only, and prevent Trace's parents from ever meeting. So, so that story brings players along through learning about cookie security and URL parameters and other aspects of website security that maybe they wouldn't encounter just in a normal workday. So uh, again, just a, an asset to, to bring learning on. All right, now before we move out of the challenges here, I wanted to also show the leaderboard. 
in an event, you can see where uh, it, it gives a list of, of who's at top. So we have one team here, and then we have a bunch of individual players. And players have this view themselves under scorecard. They can see where they stack up with everybody else. So my friend Tom, who set up this, this demo game, uh, Tom Waffles, Tom Pancakes, Tom Toast is doing very well. Uh, I'm about tied with myself <laughs> in my, uh, my other demo personality here. Uh, this shows me where I'm at amongst other people who are, uh, who are playing the game right now. It also can serve as a, an indication to my manager of, of how I'm doing. At the end of this event, uh, I get not just how many points I had, but also uh, for all the challenges in the system, how I did in each of them. So how I did across the forensics challenges, how I did across the penetration testing challenges. And that gives me and my manager a perspective on maybe what I need next for training or maybe where my skills are uh, where I'm not being utilized. One other challenge I wanted to show, just to, to give a, a feel for the breadth of what we have going on, is the, the shell coding challenge. And when I say challenge, I actually mean set of challenges. We've got a whole block of these. And as players click this and, and get into it, uh, what they end up seeing is a trainer for learning x64 shell code. So this is the very low, angle, lo low level language that uh, modern computers talk in. And this is a wonderful platform for folks who are maybe the really elite offensive types who build their own shell code or, or maybe want to learn how to code a, uh, a reverse shell. Uh, also very handy for folks in uh, malware reverse engineering. This, this lets them look at things uh, from that, that low perspective, right? When, when they get a, a malicious executable and they want to see what it's about, they can pick back through it and have some idea of what's going on. One other important aspect and differentiator here is the launcher window. Uh, the launcher web browser page lets players go in and manage a lot of their own assets. So you see here I have uh, access to recreate or change the password on my Windows VM, that, that Windows in a, in a browser tab. I also have access here to pull in uh, a zip file. This, this zip was created specifically for me for a set of cloud challenges. We have a whole block of AWS cloud challenges that begin with this zip of source code that might have some access key material in it. So uh, again, this is provided to the player to allow them to manage some of their own assets. So if, if they do forget the password to their Windows machine or, or if they just want to rebuild it and start over, they can do this here without any support from uh, event operations. Right, so at the end of the day, NetWars is about learning, it's about having fun, uh, and, it's, and it is about practicing skills, right? We do it as, as fun as we can. We try to keep it all uh, gamified to, to keep folks engaged. And uh, if you ever come to a live NetWars event, you'll, you'll see folks just incredibly focused in their computers uh, with music playing and, uh, and really just, just doing all they can for you know, six hours to, to, to learn and progress through the game. It's really a, a wonderful, nerdy scene that I, I appreciate every time. Uh, but at the same time, this is all very practical, right? Part of the SANS promise is the skills you learn in a SANS course are skills you can use your next day on the job. And that's no less true for cyber ranges. All the types of things that folks do in net wars are the types of things they need to do in a normal cybersecurity job. So, so this extends the SANS promise that way. So with that, this concludes our demonstration. Uh, if you have any questions, please do reach out to SANS for more details. We're happy to talk about net wars and, and other offerings. And thanks so much for your time.